All right, welcome to the uh, January 15th in Ancred's working group meeting. Uh, holiday in the US, didn't realize that until a few moments ago. So we have less from the US here, but anyway, everyone, as I said, all the right people are here. Um, reminder that this is a Linux Foundation and Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the antitrust policy of the Linux Foundation is in effect as is the Hyperledger Hyper Code of Conduct. Let's be good to one another. Um, on the agenda, I really wanna focus on um, nailing down exactly what we're doing as far as implementation so that we can uh, get started on the implementations or continue uh, with the implementation for those that have started um, and, and make sure we've got a, a good design for the frameworks and interoperability. So that's gonna be the focus of, of today's call. Um, and this is about an Oncreds in W3C format. Um, before we get started, any uh, welcome to all. Thanks for attending. Any introductions people want to make or announcements or any updates to the agenda people would like to um, start with? Feel free to grab the mic. One of the things I should highlight, I noticed uh, as I look over at the list, um, at see if anyone jumped up to the top to uh, uh, to speak. Uh, Artem is at the top of the list. Artem, fantastic work on keeping up with the, the, the requests. All the merges of the major um, tasks have been done, so much appreciated for that. Um, fantastic work. We finally merged the last of the three major uh, the big PRs, we've got a couple more for evolving the predicates a little bit um, as per requests that have been made um, um, since since more uh, since the major work was completed. So thank you for that. There are a couple of PRs in there. The CL signatures one was merged today, um, enabling the predicate list, and we'll um, look at anything else that might be needed. All right. Um, I think, you know, after doing a bunch of reading yesterday and going through um, things, I think this represents, this presentation represents where we're going and allowing us to really um, move forward with this. So I'll just go through this. Um, what the heck, if I could see it, well, I might as well go into... And I can't move things around. Why not? I don't know. And I can't see because of where Zoom is, the slideshow, but I won't even bother. All right. Um, goal is agreement for finalizing the two designs um, and adjustments we're going to make in the library and able to, uh, to enable support of this. Um, interoperability components, um, what are we going to use for issuing and presenting and what attachment formats to use? Um, and then what are the behavior changes that we're going to see in issuers, holders, and verifiers in, in Akapai and, and Agent Framework JavaScript in order to um, both enable the functionality, allow issuance, holding, and, and presenting of such credentials, and um, and what uh, what triggers these things, and then what's in and out of scope. And this last bit, um, I was a little light on. I was surprised that I didn't have more in there, so I might not have thought of enough things. So let's keep um, that in mind. And if, if I've missed things there, please let me know. So I think what we've agreed on is that issue credential protocol will use the proposed uh, new attachment format of RFC 089 W3C data integrity attachments. Um, Timo has put the pull request in here. Um, so we've got a description of what will, uh, will be produced in this document. Um, it's pretty clean and concise. We've got an offer attachment, a request attachment, and an issue attachment for the, the items. We cover um, detection of when an on-creds credential is to be used, what the binding methods are, when a um, 
we could have multiple signatures on it and and how that would get implemented so um all of that is i think well covered um i don't doubt we'll we'll uncover things in the uh implementation and that's fine we can uh and and i'm happy to what what the areas community decides as far as merging this either ahead or after the implementations is fine um but this is what we'll drive off of um, agreement on that. Any comments, questions about that? Great work, Timo, on that. Now we've got test vectors available for those attachments. So there's a repo, um, there's an offer, a request, and an issue. So if I go to the repo, um, it's already open, I'm sure, but um and look at the vectors um in particular the di offer the di request and the di issue are the main ones with um this extra one being um the holder binding for when we're using a non and on preds so these three and i've got links in the presentation and i should share the presentation i don't know if anyone um actually I'll, oh and i can't see the share button either i can't see those buttons maybe i really need to do move things around okay uh, i'll just pop that into chat okay So um, those test vectors and, and again, as we discover anything in the implementation in the attachments um, or, you know, and in the test vectors themselves, we can, we can adjust them. So that's issuing a credential that only covers issuing. So the proposal as well is that we present protocols using the existing diff presentation exchange attachment format. And this is a, a, a relatively big change for an on creds in that a request will come in via um, a diff presentation exchange um, will be processed um, and a presentation returned using that format um timo the big question i had i was kind of surprised at I, I had thought the submission would include the proof itself. Am, am I missing something? Or where? how does the, the submission and the presentation connect? Or what, ha what happens in the presentation message? Are both the submission and the presentation sent independently? Or what's the process? You would send... Um... So it depends on like which protocol you use, but with DITCOM, you include the submission within the presentation itself. So you would have presentation submission key in the verifiable presentation and, and that contains this. So I can maybe add another example where it is the combined um, okay. um, version of, of those two. Okay, could you please do that? Because I, I wasn't clear. I, I know about a submission. I know about a presentation. I don't know how they they connect together based on this. So I mean, I think isn't there an example in there? I'm looking at one in the presentation exchange thing. Um, um, there is a presentation exchange, but it's the submission. Uh, so the diff presentation exchange calls for a submission, which is just this, mm -hmm. and then um, and it is combined in some way and that's what i'm not quite clear on with the w3c presentation which is here is what that looks like yeah so it will just be in the presentation here as a key um presentation okay so lower that, dash so it would just get added here as the submission would be right here like yeah at the top level yeah. Okay.
So Golda, that's part of the diff presentation exchange spec. Um, and it, it it is what gives the map between um, the request that came across, which is the definition, and then how you interpret the presentation to map it back to the, uh, the definition that came in. Okay, no, having an example will be great. And yeah, yeah I definitely yeah. appreciate Timo having yeah. those. Okay. Um, I, I think I put this in here because this is, I think we will, we will have clarifications and, and perhaps changes necessary to the 510, um, protocol and we'll see how to handle it. Clarifications just for those new to the, um, to Aries clarifications we can put in without any, you know, version change or anything. Um, changes might entail a, a minor or a major upgrade to the um, version. Um, the goal here would be to implement something regardless of what happens, and we'll, do, we'll deal with the fallout of changes of versions and so on. We'll do what we need to do to get it to work as far as this work context, and we won't worry about the administrative overhead of actually getting the changes completed and through. So hopefully that makes sense. I don't want to hold up any implementation because, you know, we've got to get approval to change the version or anything like that. We're just going to get something working with agreement across and and go from there. Okay. Um, biggest thing I see there is that um, an on-creds has more powerful restrictions than does diff presentation exchange. And so we're probably gonna lose some functionality, I think, um, but we'll live with that. Um, Timo, you seem pretty happy that we could do this in a reasonable way and weren't too worried about the, the loss. And, and, and in many ways, we also get, we add functionality, I think as well. So it's kind of a trade-off, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, I, I don't think we're really losing any functionality um, because I was thinking, and you can even do a on a uh, input descriptor. You can do multiple predicates. Um, um, it seems because you can do like minimum eighteen, maximum twenty one in the yeah. same input descriptor, and Anacrets would be able to create two. Um, predicate proof from it. So I don't think we lose any functionality. No, I was thinking more of the restrictions on things like the cred def ID and things like that. It's the restrictions. The other thing I didn't know was, do you have an example of where the um, verifier expresses revocation? And how we would do it in a non-creds? What's again, the verifier? Okay, could you say that again? Sorry. How a, how a verifier expresses that they want a proof of, of revocation. Um, I'm okay in losing some of the interval functionality because I think it's dumb. <laughs> um, but what? how exactly does a, a non-creds verifier say I want revocation? Proof, proof of non-revocation. Yeah, I think there is a um, section, I think, in the fact spec. Wait, I'll, I'll find it and send the link uh, okay. in a bit. On, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no rush right away. Status, I think. Okay. Um, okay, so now this gets us to the behavior changes. And, and here's kind of what I'm suggesting. Um, changes with an issuer, a verifier, and a holder. So with an issuer, um, the constraint I'm su suggesting is that only the issuer via the offer can initiate issuing and a non-creds W3C VC. So the holder does not have a say in it, <laughs> um, only the issuer does. And the trigger is that they use the 80, uh, 0809 attachment with the non-creds settings. Um, 
they assume that both the issuer and the holder are both supporting it on credit W3 VCs. Um, I'm not sure exactly if how or if we can support both the 1.1 or the 2 and the 2, but we might be able to. It's just something we'll figure out as we go. But I don't think this is a major issue. I think this becomes just a, something we implement or you know, worst case hard code into the into the implementation, um, wherever it happens to be. Um, I had thought it needed to be part of the um, an on creds RF library, but I now think it actually is is controlled by the controller of the uh, issuer. Um, in other words, it's a business decision that can be made at runtime, essentially. So we'll see how that goes. Um, not a big deal on that. For now, we'll use the 1.1 for initial initial work, and we'll see uh, as the implementation moves forward. So the issuer via the offer initiates issuing in an on creds in W3C VC format using, um, and, and it's done from an interoperability perspective by using the 0809 attachment, the DI VC attachment. Um, issuer encoding of the credential attributes is dropped. That would be normally done in a, in a legacy and on creds VC, but we don't have encoding in uh, the W3C. Um, so that, really is the change in the issuer. Obviously, they have to be hand, able to handle receiving back the 089 attachment and sending an issue in, um, it, it, sorry, sending the issue message with the 089 attachment. The trigger is the offer, but after, after the offer is done, um, they'll be back and forth using the, uh, the new attachments. Um, Future possibilities could be that a holder responds to a legacy and on creds format um, offer with a 089 attachment and transitions over so that the holder says, hey, I want it in W3C format. Um, the other is that the issuer could fall back if they get a problem report because the holder doesn't understand the 089 attachment. So it's, a, it's an older attachment and they get a problem report. Again, those are future possibilities, not something we need to worry about in this implementation. The only thing we're going to have is that there's somehow the issuer will be able to say, I want to issue this offer um, using the 089 attachment and that triggers the entire flow the rest of the way. Everything else is based on um, receipt of information and, and the processing. Um, on the verifier side, when we're talking presentations, and I did verifier first and then get to holders because holders are affected by both issuers and verifiers. Um, verifiers use the 0510 attachment format to request um, a presentation, um, and they and so they're using uh, and so they expect back a W three C verifiable presentation with a diff uh, via the diff presentation submission, um, and it may or may not contain in a non creds um, presentation. Um, Essentially, what uh, we'll talk about what the holder does, but the verifier simply uses um, what certainly in Akapai is existing functionality to send an attachment format. There may be updates needed again to deal with the res the the way that an on credits restrictions are done and the way that um, revocation is um, invoked. The way the verifier is expresses that hey, I need a proof of non-revocation included with this. Um, pretty much that should be done um, in the business logic side. And as long as the verifier can process the attachment and send off the request, it should be fairly straightforward in there. Um, again, 
Um, so holder implementations um, respond with non and non creds presentations. They can do that if that's what satisfies the proof request. And um, and then there's the thing I mentioned earlier about um, there's some features in and non creds um, restrictions, what are called restrictions in the presentation request format of a non creds that we lose. And so we'll have to take a look at that. But again, I think that's mostly in in what the controller constructs as the presentation request and then hands to the framework, whether it be Akapai or AF, AFJ. Um, obviously, verifiers need to be able to process presentations with 0, 5, 10 attachments. So receiving a presentation from a holder that contains in a non-creds um, format VP. So they've got to be able to receive the VP and go, hey, the crypto suite is an on creds, therefore I pass this to be handled by the non creds um, verifier or the code for verifying in an on creds um, verifiable credential. Credential, and then again in verifying the credentials, the encoding of re revealed attributes must be done. I'm not quite sure where that happens. I, I wasn't clear on exactly. So we'll run into that in the implementation. It'll be, it'll be clear in the implementation, I think. But the encoding is, in order to be able to verify it, you have to encode it. I think it's done in the Inoncreds RS implementation and the verifier won't need to worry about it, but I we do need to verify that. Okay, so that's the verifier. We've got the issuer. It triggers it through an offer. The verifier triggers it through the use of the um, diff presentation exchange. And now we've got the holder behavior. Um, once again, the the proposal message is out of scope, which is um, one of the messages in the issue credential protocol. So we're not going to worry about proposal at all. We're assuming that we only have the happy path case of an offer, a request and then an issue. Um, holders can receive credentials using the existing um, 592, which is the legacy and on creds mechanism um, and the JSON LD mechanism. So we don't want to disrupt those, but we do want to support the new 809 attachment formats. So they would be able to receive so existing functionality should keep working and the new 809 attachment formats come forward. Um, if there are, is there holder code? And this is something I didn't know about AFJ and whether it supports 50593. Uh, if it doesn't support it today, it doesn't need to add that support, obviously. The only reason we continue to support 593, which is J existing JSON LD functionality would be if it's already supported. Um, holders would be accept, expected to send the request message in the same attachment format as the offer. So if you get an offer in the legacy, in the legacy and on creds format, you would respond with a request message in the same format. If you receive a request in the 089-809 uh, format, um, the holder would send the attachment back in that same format. So it gets a holder gets an offer and it responds with a request using the same attachment format. Um, holders must generate the revealed credentials. I think I got lost in writing that. Um, Yeah, I don't know what I meant by this. I'm just going to mark it as, oh, I can't quite see. Yes, I can. I'm not going to delete it because I don't know what it means yet. I'm, I'm sure it was something important that I was thinking about. <laughs> okay, so that's the holder behavior. So a holder can't initiate um, uh, a issuance in um, cannot generate an issuance or sorry, cannot trigger 
the use of um, W3C format and on creds, they just respond to whatever the issuer says, old format or new. And finally, um, on the uh, on the verification side, it's the same sort of thing. If the if the we don't want to disrupt the existing receipt of a legacy and on creds presentation request, if that comes in, everything flows as it exists today. If the holder receives a 0510 presentation attachment, which it certainly um, in Akapai can be done today, um, what changes is the holder should include held and non-creds credentials in finding the credentials that satisfy the presentation. So today, um, when, when a 510 attachment is received, only JSON LD credentials are considered as a way to respond. And so what changes now is when a 510 re is received, then a non-creds credentials may be used in responding. Um, if they are used in responding, they, we conduct an, uh, we construct a an non creds verifiable presentation. Um, I did include this, and I think this is okay to include, which is it doesn't matter what format the non creds credential was received in, whether it was received as a legacy non creds or a uh, W3CVC format. Uh, and on creds, either one are candidates to be used in a 510 presentation attachments. And the non creds RS functionality, I believe, covers that. Um, if we run into imp implementation issues with this, we can we can address it. But um, I think this is a safe assumption to make. So essentially, when you get a 510 presentation attachment, any credential in the wallet is a candidate for, um, for use in the presentation to be sent back. And then um, holders send the presentation messages using uh, presentations using the same attachment uh, format as the request. Again, this idea that if I receive a uh, a legacy and on creds presentation request, I'll respond with a legacy and on creds presentation. If I receive an 0510, I will respond with an 0510. As far as out of scope, there's a few things in there. Um, we're not going to worry about right now doing issuing credentials with multiple signatures. We'll experiment with it. Um, as the implementation gets done, but is not required. Um, it would be great to have any to-dos tracked and, and noticed if, um, if uh, of what would be needed to make that work. Um, this topic came up last week a little bit. Um, and Timo, I don't know if you want to document this anywhere, but we'll assume that if you're going to use both um, an on-creds link secret holder binding plus um, a signature, um, uh, a, a signed attachment holder binding for a, a, a non and on-creds credential that there, there must be an ID in the an on-creds schema. Um, Will, uh, we as in um, with my BC Gov hat on, we'll worry about the creation of the AATH tests. So people will not have to learn how to construct those tests um, and, and we can prepare for the execution of those tests. Um, so we do assume, and this was in the, the code with us, that best practices as far as unit, te unit tests um, be done, integration tests be implemented, um, those are going to be necessary. So those are within the CICD of the um, frameworks, but the AATH across we'll worry about separately. And we will execute them and, and raise issues if there's problems. So I think that covers it. I've talked a lot. Um, any questions, comments?
Okay. Um, I did expand on this in the um, as a HackMD document, which involves the Akapai design document that we that has been worked on, and I uh, apologize for transitioning it from a, a GitHub document to HackMD. I don't know if you're familiar, but it's just markdown, markdown on one side and markdown visibility. Um, this is more like Google Docs, and I actually tried to put it in Google Docs later to try to make it easier, but um, we, I'm happy to use Google Docs as well for this, but I think we need to iterate a little tighter than we can do with GitHub. Um, so I re, re, uh, rewrote some of this um, up front. Um, and yeah, we can go the sync between them, but um, I, it, I felt it was really hard to put them into comments and questions and then have somebody else write it. Um, I just wanted to write some things. So um, I've tried to put in here as as much as possible um, what's needed for the Akapai work. Um, and so invite you to look at this. Um, so uh, with this, we can obviously make changes directly into the document to fix it. We can see um, the track, uh, track changes or versioning is automatically on. I actually paid for HackMD finally, um, so that I've got all, all versions. Um, uh, unfortunately, I did that after I did all the updates and HackMD, if you're using the free account, only keeps 10. <laughs> so it lost the changes that I made from the original document. So uh, apologies for that. But um, going forward, we can see changes anyone makes. So feel free to make direct changes into this document. Um, there is a commenting system that you can use, or you can just say, you know, um, I think it's, yeah, at Steven says, this is silly. Since I wrote it, I can say it was silly. Um, so feel free to put comments in there. And I'm hoping this helps in leading to jumping into the presentation or, or jumping into the implementation. So I think we can nail down exactly how to do this and get that first part complete faster and and um and an easier way um yes the hack md link is let me grab it out of here where did i put it? oh you know what i did is i put it into the um um no hang on one sec Well, that's not grabbing. There we go. Um, pull requests. This. Why is that not opening? There we go. So um, I put that into a comment in that, but here is the HackMD link. It is um, open for everybody to edit, so you should be able to edit it right away. Um, and I'll go through and and um, continue to um, monitor that and help out as much as I can as far as nailing down that. Um, I've also lined up um, a... Akapai developer as a um, as a guide for development, and so um, you'll have that resource available to you for um, as you jump into the implementation to be able to um, define the code parts of it. That is a level I'm not able to help with. I can help with an awful lot on the protocols and, and, and that experience, but when it gets to changing line 792 of a file, I'm not going to be very good. <laughs> no, we, we, we appreciate it. We have Daniel when we need him too, but it'd be super to have an additional resource. Exactly, today. exactly. And I'm hoping you use it. Yeah, Daniel um, will jump into that as well and, and, and play with that. And happy to have direct meetings now that we're implementing 
in Akapai and we're ready to implement, let's um, let's have meetings on uh, within uh, with an Akapai maintainer directly available. Great, I'm excited. I, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited to get to this point. It's time. Okay, um, back to here. Um, Timo, did you hear anything that scares you? Uh, or Martin, did you see anything that is unexpected in any of this? Or is this what you intended? I think it is what we intended. Excellent. Okay, good. Same for me. Awesome. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else to talk about today? Excellent. All right. Um, well, as I say, uh, Peter Golda, um, do check out that document. Encourage Daniel to take a look and let's evolve. Um, let's iterate on it um, and get it nailed so that we can get going on the on the coding on the Akapai side. Yeah, no, no, exactly. And I think Peter was about to email you uh, to schedule a meeting with you. So uh, he'll yeah. probably do that right after this. Perfect. That's awesome. Excellent. Well, have a wonderful what remains of your day, depending on where you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. you. Thanks all, much appreciated.